Nothing says holiday baking like gingerbread. Tis the season, and here with a great recipe for it is baker Gavin Knox. First, I have to tell you, I love your handle, uh, crumbs in my beard. It's so cute. And I knew immediately like this, he's my kind of people, right? What are we making today? So, Tracy, today I'm going to be making some sticky gingerbread with an eggnog glaze. Ooh, okay, that sounds very holiday appropriate. Yeah, it's, it is full of holiday flavor, ginger, yeah. and there's lots of spices in there. Okay. So, I'm going to kick it off here. In my pan here, I've melted some butter, uh -huh. some golden corn syrup, Ooh. some fancy molasses, and then we've got the spices. Okay. We've got cinnamon, cloves, and then there are ginger in lots of formats. Okay, lots of ginger. Lots of ginger. I've got some freshly grated ginger in here. Yeah. I've got some ground ginger. Uh huh. I've got some ginger marmalade. Oh my gosh. And I'll straight eat together. And then I also have these. And these are tonka beans. Okay, take a look at these. Never seen them in my life. Uh, a tonka bean. I'm just going to smell this. What do you Can think? Can you see that? Okay, it. I don't know what that smells like. Like, I feel like it's not licorice -y, but it's it's not, it looks like a coffee bean. Exactly. It's a bit like a coffee bean in that yeah. it's hard and it's kind of wrinkled like a raisin. They're actually yeah. from um, Central and Southern America. Okay. And they have a flavor and a smell of what I call hyper vanilla. So it's really yes. concentrated vanilla, but there's hints of cherry and almonds in there. Yeah. And it gives a really, really um, good flavor to the gingerbread. It's, okay. you know, it's my secret ingredient. Well, not so secret now that I've said <laughs> it on national TV. Um, Don't but, yeah. tell anyone unless you're making the recipe, but how do you put that in there? So what do you those, do to get it in there? I would actually use this. And this is a microplane. Yeah. And basically, just get it and grate it in like nutmeg. Like nutmeg. Basically. And okay, you end up great. with this flavored powder that's really concentrated, really, really good flavor in there. Oh, lovely. Okay. So everything yeah. here is melted together. And yeah. into this, then, I'm going to add some milk. Beautiful. Hopefully not splash it everywhere. Yeah, you did it I'm going to add some bicarb, which I've mixed with some water, and that okay. will give the gingerbread rising. And then I'm going to put in two eggs. Beautiful. And what heat do you usually have it on for this? Like just medium? Heat? Once you're adding all these things in, I actually take it off the heat. So Got the it. heat under here is turned off. So I noticed you haven't had me help you. Is that because you saw what I did with the last recipe? Uh, I'm, being <laughs> I'm being diplomatic and just letting it go. And whilst I'm mixing this, because you spoke too soon, I'm yes. going to get you cracking on with the glaze. <laughs> okay, I'll do some stuff. And that's basically some powdered sugar, which yep. I'm going to get you to add the eggnog that's there. Is that this? Yep. So just mm -hmm. add that in over it. Okay. And then mix that together till it's nice and smooth. And whilst you're doing that, I'm going to add the wet ingredients here into this flour mix here. And this Beautiful. is just all-purpose flour. Okay. Which I'm going to add in all the wet ingredients. Now this, at some point, if I keep blending it, will become a liquid? Um, at some point, yes. If yeah? Keep going, keep going. Okay. But the way you can actually thin it down is by adding in maybe about a half a teaspoon extra yeah. of eggnog until it gets to a liquid state. You don't have any utensils here, do you? Oh, well, maybe oh, I can use go. this. Are you, you going to use that. that for anything? No, you can grab that one. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Just work away. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so... So I'm going to mix this up, and what you want to do with this is keep going with it until all the flour has actually been mixed into it. Yes. You'll notice that the batter is actually a bit thin and liquidy. That's a good sign, because okay. that's basically what gives it the sticky texture later on. So this is the sort of gingerbread that when you bite into it, it's going to be, it's going to have, it's sticky. It's sticky. It's and, it, and you want there, it to be sticky. Yeah, it's almost like, a, more than, I guess, when you say gingerbread to people, they think of the cookies. Yeah. So the hard cookies. This is a cake. Yeah. And it's really cake and fudgy. Right. So my mix is mixed up. And so it was mine. You're just getting there. I'll, I'll, I'll swoop in the rescue <laughs> in a bit. Um, I'm going to put this batter yeah. into a lined pan. And this, I use a size of 12 by 9. Okay. And most people have a 12 by 9. It's pretty much a standard. Yeah, it's, it's not one of those ones where you have to um, go chasing through online stores or right. anywhere where I found it. Oh, this is Get looking this good, here. Gavin. And no, you cannot lick the mixer. No, I'm not allowed? <laughs> no. Okay. I'm going to wait till you turn around and... <laughs> and taste some of that. Exactly. Okay, so now this goes into... This is over in the oven. Are you going to do it or do you want me to do it? You know what? Why don't you take this yeah. out and I'll, I'll put Let's it do in. teamwork. Let's do the teamwork. Make the so dream work. I'll take this one out. And this oh, it looks has beautiful. been baked at 350 degrees for about... 45 to 50 minutes. Okay, so that's a while. It takes a bit of time. It takes a while because the batter has been liquid, so yeah. you need to get all that moisture off. But as you can see, it gets quite firm and the top is quite sticky. It looks perfect. So this. Now just put the glaze on. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
I made it so easy we're, we're, for we're you. We'll move swiftly on it with that. The piping bag and the, put that right on. With this, once that was actually properly done, maybe. Yes. <laughs> under studio lights, it evaporated. Right. Um, you that could had either to be it. pipe it on, as I've done here, which yes. is basically put in a piping bag and drizzle it over. Yeah. Or you could actually just pour the whole lot on. If you're fancy getting the kids in the kitchen and getting messy, yeah. pour the whole lot on. Put it on then with a palette knife or a spatula and yeah. wait for it to dry. Wait maybe about 30 minutes or so. Okay. Cut it up into squares or whatever sizes. And then you can go cubes. for it. Did you use any of the candy ginger? The candy ginger that is something that basically I put in because I love candy ginger. Yeah. I've left it up because some people don't like it. Yeah, it's it's a bit of a marmite, like but it's ginger on top of ginger on top of ginger because it's festive. Do you like ginger? Can't tell. Okay. I love it. The recipe's beautiful. It's perfect for the holidays. And would you get your kids? You've got teens. I've got teens. Would you get them involved in this sort Trying of thing? to get them in the kitchen is a bit of an issue. But I yeah, know. it's it's easy enough for kids to get involved with. Yeah, you know? very nice. And thank you for being so gracious with thank me. Thank you. Lovely. <laughs> thank you, Gavin. You know the drill. Find his recipe on CityLine.tv.